We begin the day with the terror of telling or trying to tell the truth in Turkey. Earlier today, Turkish police raided the main office of the country's last remaining newspaper that dares to dissent. The editor and a dozen senior staff members at Chimhuriyet were arrested and taken into custody. And the prosecutor says they are all suspected of what, under the current state of emergency, amounts to aiding terrorists. And for the next five days, they'll have access to no one. Silence and secrecy in what opposition parties are declaring Erdogan's coup on democracy. One of Turkey's leading newspapers saw its editor-in-chief and several senior members of staff arrested in a string of early morning raids. Members of Turkey's main opposition party stood alongside the paper's remaining journalists. They are calling this a coup against democracy. We will hold our heads high and continue our publication without fear. Since this morning, we know there have been detention warrants for 16 of our friends. Turkey's government says the arrested journalists are suspected of committing crimes on behalf of Kurdish militants and US-based cleric Fethullah Gülen, who the government considers terrorists. The left-leaning secular newspaper has been under pressure for months. Previous editor Chan Dunda survived a gun attack in May. He was then sentenced to five years in jail for publishing a story on Turkish arms shipments to Syrian rebels. Abroad at the time of sentencing, he now lives in Germany. The arrests at Jumhuriyet are the latest in an intensifying crackdown on government opposition in Turkey. The country is in a state of emergency following an attempted coup in July. Since then, dozens of media organizations have been forced to close, tens of thousands of civil servants have been fired, and over 30,000 people arrested. Well, I'm joined tonight by Arne Leeds. He is a member of the European Parliament. His main focuses are foreign affairs and human rights. And from Istanbul, our correspondent Dorian Jones is with us tonight. Um, Dorian, good evening to you. We heard earlier that the raid of the newspaper today, it, it, that it came as a, a shock to the senior staff. What is being reported tonight? Well, there isn't that much reporting around most of the mainstream media in Turkey. Most of that is very loyal to the government now. They have reported the event and they are following the government's line that this is an investigation uh, into terrorist activities, uh, which is what the prosecutor is saying, support of the Kurdish rebel group, the PKK, and conspirators behind the coup attempt uh, in July, uh, followers of the Islamic cleric Fethullah Gulen, although there's been no evidence to by the prosecutors to support these claims. Um, but the rest of the social media is still very much alive uh, and reporting the concerns that this is seen as one of the most uh, major blows on press freedom in Turkey and arguably the last major institution that is criticizing and, and critical of the government. Mr. Leeds, you just returned from Turkey. Yeah. And you were in the mainly Kurdish city of Diyarbakir, where both mayors were, were arrested on anti-terror charges. Tell me about that. Well, I see that mm -hmm. everyone has put it under this uh, headline to be an, a terrorist. And so the government makes it very easy. And we visited as a group of uh, European social democrats uh, the city, and we uh, saw the people in the town hall. And it's not only that the mayor and the deputy mayor were taken away and being hostage. No, they took also their hard drives off the computers and searched the office and hang the flag down. So uh, we were still able to visit them, uh, but the population is not able to go into the town hall. So basically, the work of the town hall is dead. And uh, through the day, it was the court, and yeah. the decision was done in the evening that they both have to stay uh, in prison. And uh, this is ridiculous. And we, as politicians, are calling for their uh, direct release. Yeah, you, you issued a, a statement today, and we're going to show our viewers that, which um, reports a severe erosion of democracy in the country. Um, and you also have support. Uh, Martin Schulz, the European Parliament president, saying today that Turkey has crossed another line. What are you going to do about it? Well... I've been already in May in Turkey, where I said at a press conference that this country is moving towards a dictatorship. 
Um, we have no free restriction anymore. We don't have free speech anymore of academics who just signed a petition to have peace in their mm. own country. Mm. So they've been taken out. I've met many journalists, including Mr. Dunder from Cumhuriyet, and uh, he himself uh, has been now leaving the country. And again, the, now, as you just put in the film, uh, chief editor is also being uh, taken into prison. So, yeah, but is that going to make the policies of Erdogan change? I mean, do you have anything, the European Parliament, the European Union, do you have anything, any leverage right. now to make him change his policy? Well, we did question that in last week in the European Parliament where we had a whole resolution just on journalism in Turkey. Mm -hmm. Made it quite clear and put uh, over 130 journalists by name into uh, a paper. But as we see it now, Erdogan doesn't care. And he said this himself on Saturday, that uh, Europe has no teeth. Mm. In that regard, uh, there's nothing which could stop him from his perspective. And now we have to take serious uh, conversations. And uh, the question to me, joining the European Union, is something he's not interested in anymore. This is foreseeable. Bringing up the death penalty again is which he for says sure. He, which he says he will pass. Well, this, is, yeah. this is a referendum than being a European country or not. Mm. So maybe the Turkish population takes us up from another point of view and wants to join the European Union, but that is really in the air and therefore it's threatening the whole situation. Dorian, let me ask you, do, do you sense any worry in Ankara? I mean, Erdogan, you know, he says he Europe doesn't have any teeth and he, you know, appears at the moment to be the one with all the teeth. Well, that's right. And to be honest, Ankara feels they really are in a very strong position because while you have all these uh, messages of condemnation from the European Parliament, at the same time, the Europe's intelligence chiefs are all queuing up to Ankara for looking for more cooperation to stop uh, the Islamic State activities, particularly as it's the fear in Europe that if Islamic State is defeated, there will be a, a big surge of Islamic State fighters from, Euro um, from European countries returning back to Europe, and they need Turkey's cooperation to intercept those people. And Turkey is playing a very clever game of playing individual countries against one another, mm. saying, well, if you're not very hel helpful to us, well, we'll help a, help a country that's more sympathetic to our position. And this seems to be a very effective strategy, and Turkey really believes that Europe Europe doesn't have any teeth. Turkey is in a strong position, especially as it believes that it has no chance of joining the European Union and doesn't really show much interest in that. So Turkey does feel in a very strong position and doesn't take very seriously these words of criticism from Europe. I want to pick back up for a moment, um, Dorian, on the notion of press freedom in Turkey. The expelled Turkish journalist um, Mahir Zeynalov was on this program back in August, August 6th, talking about the crackdown immediately following the failed coup attempt. Uh, take a listen to what he said. It's, it's just funny when they say that these newspapers are aligned with a terrorist organization. This is, um, this is the abuse of Turkey's vague and broad anti-terrorism law. They're just uh, painting with a broad brush every news outlet, every journalist with spreading terror propaganda, and they're just jailing them. They're just uh, slapping well, with heft defiance, with punishments. So th this is just a routine stuff for the government. Dorian, talk to us just a little bit about how you were able to do your job. I mean, do you, do you feel threatened? Do you, do you feel safe being a journalist in Turkey right now? Well, I have to say, I didn't feel any physical intimidation or, or the, the feeling of a threat of possible arrest. I think there is certainly a concern across the foreign journalist community that come the end of the year when you apply for your press cards, it may not be so easy to get one. And without a press card, you can't stay in the country. Very similar to the situation like in China. So mm -hmm. I think with the end of the year approaching, there is this concern that the, the foreign journalists could at some point or some of them be targeted, um, particularly as foreign journalists now are remaining as really the only source of independent news uh, coming out of Turkey. And much of uh, Euro Turkey's population does follow closely what international media is reporting. So I think further down the road, with the end of the year approaching, there is concern about what will happen to the status of foreign journalists here. All right, our correspondent in Istanbul, Dorian Jones. Dorian, as always, thank you very much and stay safe there in Turkey.